Incoming telegram, it reads, This program was brought to you by Skillshare. Breaking news, Medal of Honor is back with World War II all over again, but this time it's on the inside of some noggin goggles. You'd best keep your peepers peeled to the television, because the Great War has never been more immersive. Whoa. Oh, shit. If you'd like to aid our boys in the good fight against evil overseas, be prepared to part with 60 clams and 170 gigabytes. That's enough data to make a woman's head explode. But here's the question on every gamer's lips across all 50 states. Is this game worth playing? Or would you be better off chowing down on some cyanide? Luckily, our favorite little boy in the whole wide world, Ren with two ends, is hot on the case. He's hither to give you the haps on this here game through the anisotropic magic of digital video. So put on your coziest duds and buckle up for some high-octane pugilistic thrills. <coughs> Romance. Oh my god, Klaus, be careful where you put your hands. Try not to touch my sparse dicker. And betrayal. All that and more on this episode of Ren's Review. Hey, what's buzzing, cousins? I found this swell old website that filled me in on slang from the 1940s. It helped a lot with immersing me into the game. And trust me, Medal of Honor needs all the help it can get. In fact, the game is so bad that it made me resort to smoking, just so I could feel something. <laughs> Tasty. Tastes good. Medal of Honor Above and Beyond is a game that goes above and beyond in getting everything wrong. Idiot. Oh. <laughs> it is a masterwork in how not to make a video game. Oh, oh, shit. But before we jump into things, standing up to play VR all day has made me hungry. I gotta eat. Meet me at the Denny's in three seconds. So here's the haps. When I first saw the trailer for this game, which did a good job of gamma and all of its features, I was actually looking forward to playing it, especially when I learned that it had been in development for four years by the fellas over at Respawn Studios. You know, the guys that did Apex Legends, Jedi Fallen Over, and one of my favorite FPS single-player campaigns of all time, Titanfall 2. And even though World War II shooters are one of the most played-out genres in all of gaming, I was still intrigued. If ever there were a way to finally bring new life to World War II, it'd be through VR. Metal of Honor games are always about capturing the authenticity. I think the most moving thing about being with World War II veterans was we were able to experience them coming to terms with moments that had stayed with them long after the war ended. Lieutenant, please get that off my plane. There is so much wrong with this game that I honestly don't even know where to begin. And frankly, I can't wait to tell you guys all about it. Medal of Honor is so lazy. I'd venture to say that this thing is unfinished. They put a mask over the doctor's face in the tutorial so that they wouldn't have to animate his mouth. The loading screens are just these big monolithic rectangles. Items in your hands phase through objects and walls. They have no agency, no sense of reality. The physics are trash too. Look. Whoa. That frying pan is lighter than my lighter. The Nazis die two seconds after you kill them. Well, can I spank a Nazi with this? No. Every time you reload your weapon, not only does it feel clunky and awkward, but you have to pull the slide back on your gun, even if there's still a bullet in the chamber. My character's hands have the suction power of a Dyson Hoover. Oh my God. Get the paper. <laughs> gripping and grabbing things that are far out of my range, but never grabbing what I actually want him to grab. And look at their faces. Good God, what is wrong with their faces? They say war is hell, but those lucky bastards never had to play Medal of Honor above and beyond. Oh my God.
However, amidst all the junk, this game does have one silver lining. It lets you kill Nazis as you play the saxophone. Good sax aside, pretty much everything about the gameplay is really bad. Respawn Studios really saxophoned it in with this one. Now, while Steam reviews might have you believe that this game is a diamond in the rough, in all actuality, it's more like a pearl in the harbor. First off, the enemy AI has got to be some of the worst I've ever seen. The artificial intelligence is about as competent as FDR was bodily capable. In between missions, there's a little shooting gallery where you can experiment with different weapons. And for whatever reason, there's an endless supply of Nazi clones running through this room that you can pop and drop to your Purple Heart's content. They just sprint out there in a straight line and wait for you to blow their brains out. What you're seeing here isn't all too different to how they behave in actual combat. I mean, we're talking early access levels of intelligence here. Most enemies just stop dead in their tracks like a deer in the headlights at the sheer sight of you. Some of the more, let's call them advanced enemies, will do a slow, pathetic little waddle as they return fire at you, and more often than not, the Jermies don't even try getting away from your grenades. But every now and again, if you're lucky, they'll throw a grenade at you, which you can grab out of the air and toss right back at them. When you pull it off, it does feel pretty badass. But still, this is far and away the worst AI I have ever covered on this channel. These guys really just can't wait to go to heaven. Now there's an awful lot of combat in this game, and it is all completely and utterly ruined by the horrible artificial intelligence. They always know exactly where you are, so trying to flank them is out of the question. Most of the arenas are so linear anyway that you couldn't even flank these guys if you wanted to. Even on the hardest difficulty, the combat is unbelievably mind-numbing. All you really gotta do is sprint around the room and haphazardly pump lead in their general direction, while remembering to reload and heal with your syringes whenever you need to. However, on a positive note, the shooting does feel pretty decent. Ooh, the guns have a nice amount of weight and power to them. There's a nice subtle screen shaking effect that gives the weapons more of a presence when you pull the trigger. But man, the aim assist is pretty egregious. It almost makes things too easy. The bullets magnetize right between the eyes. And yeah, you can probably turn aim assist off in the options menu, but I'd prefer to have the aid on rather than have the aid off. Grenades are pretty neat too. After grabbing them off of your chest, you can either remove the pin with your hand or pull it out with your teeth. The problem is, throwing in this game is wildly inconsistent. It seems to have a lot of trouble tracking how quickly your hand is moving and where you want the grenade to land, and usually in the time it takes you to pull a grenade out and toss it, you could have killed every Nazi in the room anyway. It's just too much effort to go through that they almost aren't even worth using. I'm somebody who tends to prefer linear, story-driven games, but Medal of Honor has the worst type of linearity, the kind of linearity that funnels you down trenches, hallways, and tight corridors. It is just so restrictive. I was blown away at what would cause me to fail a mission and restart. So let me set the scene here. For this section of the story, I am currently undercover as a janitor at a Nazi docking bay. Now, keep in mind, in this particular area, I am all alone here. There is not a single Aryan in the area. There's not a one German that can hear me murmuring. Yet when I pick up this hammer, I failed the mission. What? During a stealth section, I held my knife up to the wrong window, apparently. What? Later on, I just simply hovered my hand over this guy's workstation and... What? Stuff like this makes me want to flip my wig. The thing that makes it doubly frustrating too is some of the environments they've created for this game are genuinely neat. I want to interact with these places, but there is absolutely no reason to explore at all. Doing so is whistling Dixie. If you find yourself venturing off the beaten path, you're always rewarded with Bupkiss. 
and sure, there are collectibles you can find, but they do absolutely nothing for you. Weapons, ammo, and healing items are almost always sitting out in plain sight. There's no incentive for the player to explore. And that is such a shame, such a loss of potential. Because of the more interactive nature of virtual reality, people are more inclined to peruse every nook and cranny of each playable space. VR legitimately offers up the absolute best method of exploration in all of gaming, and Respawn Studios had no idea how to utilize that potential. This is legitimately one of the worst FPS games I have ever reviewed. It is strictly from Dixie, and after playing this game for about 30 minutes, I was all out of gas. In my Call of Duty Cold War review, I said this. Now, I believe firmly that one of the most important attributes of an engaging first-person shooter campaign is variety. Now, unlike Cold War, Medal of Honor frequently tries to spice up its gameplay. This baby is oozing with variety. However, it completely and utterly fails at just about every single attempt it makes. Early on in the game, you're meant to traverse a minefield and are of course given a minesweeper. Look at me, I'm Ray Charles. I was ready to slowly and methodically comb the entire area with this thing while listening intently for audio spikes. But I didn't have to, because it literally just highlights the mines underground for you when you hover the minesweeper above them. So now, I can literally waggle the minesweeper side to side like a Wiimote, just like they teach in basic training. You'd have to be dumber than a Kingsman to step on a landmine here. There's a section where you're required to pick up trash off of a desk and throw it away in this little cart that you're wheeling around. Yeah, I don't think I need to elaborate on why this one's no good. And, you know, God forbid you accidentally pick something up that isn't garbage, like, oh, I don't know, a pen? I touched the pen. Midway through the game, there's a stealth section on a boat, and I actually kind of liked this one. <laughs> I had a nice time patrolling the hallways of the ship, <coughs> taking down anchor crankers one by one with nothing more than my metallic dart gun and a wrench. While it did suffer from poor AI and a good amount of jankiness, what? This stealth section offered a much needed change of pace from the slew of senseless shootouts that the game had thrown at me thus far. There were a handful of on-rail sections, all of which were horrid. One of them has you riding passenger on a popsicle, and this might just be the most uneventful on-rail section in all of gaming. There were so many moments where there was literally nothing happening. If you want true excitement, this on-rail set piece which has you locked in place in the back of a moving truck that never exceeds 10 miles per hour is sure to be a gas. All the Nazis go out of their way to stand right next to the litany of exploding barrels just to make things easy for you. This one here on the boat is at least a little more eventful. The speed at which you travel is much faster than the truck, but most of your vision is obscured by a dense fog so as not to make you motion sick. There are airplanes that swoop in to try to take you down, and it all ends in an epic boss battle against a big boy plane. Destroying this thing is so, so badass, and the explosion that they forced me to imagine was so cool. Well, that was an incredibly successful covert infiltration. Now I could break down each and every one of the eight or so on rail sections this game throws at the player and tell you why each one of them is terrible, boring, or flat out stupid. I mean, one of them has you outrunning an avalanche while riding on a bobsled as you phase through German trucks and shoot a Nazi who just came out of the bathroom. You'll just have to take my word for it when I tell you that each on rail section just as bad as the last one. Here's the thing too, all of these segments just sort of happen. 
One minute you're shooting down German planes from the back of a B-52 bomber, moments later you're rescuing Juliet the Spy from the back of a moving choo-choo train, and next thing you know you're storming the beach of Normandy in what is easily the worst rendition of D-Day that has ever been put to video games. There is no cohesion. Every sequence is cobbled together by nothing more than a loading screen, and there's no story to speak of that ties everything up. Now, your ship's mayday said something about there being a spy on board. I think he was an OSS agent. There, there, there he is! Where? Open fire! Cutscenes in VR are really tricky to pull off. You can't have multiple camera angles and fancy editing like you do in traditional video games. Because when cutting from one angle to the other, that's going to be really jarring when you got that headset over your sockets. So a lot of VR games get around that by having you watch the cutscene on a screen of some sort within the game, or you could go the Boneworks route and put a cutscene on an in-game object, or better yet, go the Half-Life Alex route and allow the player to freely explore the room as the cutscene is happening around them. You can either marvel at the wonderfully mo-capped animations and get swept up in the story, or you can tinker with everything. Shoot some caged head crabs, pick up their hearts, hell, you can even juggle like my boy Chris if you want to. In Medal of Honor, cutscenes are not interactive in the slightest. You can't even move. You are literally stuck to one spot on the floor while these, what are essentially cardboard cutouts, do nothing more than spout exposition at you. Dr. Gronick is stationed at the research facility in Pinamunde. This is where they designed the V1, V2, and their secret jet fighters. It's the most heavily guarded location in all of Germany. Controlled day and night, on the ground, in the air, and at sea. And the audio mixing is a little off. It can be really difficult to understand what the characters are saying sometimes. This is exactly... All the cutscenes in this game add up to about an hour and a half or so, and man, it is a painful 90 minutes. Cold. Why couldn't the Nazis occupy someplace warmer? Thanks to a new patch, you can finally skip the cutscenes now, three months after the game's release. But I didn't have that luxury when I played through it. I had to stand here and endure it. Is that a torpedo? Oh my god. In fairness, there are a handful of cutscenes that do make an attempt to be engaging. One time I had to hand Arian Carter over here a stick. Yeah, that's pretty cool. There's another cutscene where you have to slug him in the face with your Schindler's fist, but that's about as deep as it gets. Nothing but gimmicks. For the final nail in the coffin, all the characters are devoid of character. They aren't even, like, one-dimensional. I could not have cared less about these people. When Harry Potter here dies towards the end of the game, all I could do was roll my eyes. Ali, I love you. Oh, now there's a twist. I had no idea the Sarge was khaki wacky. I really couldn't stand these cutscenes, so while they played out, I took my headset off and learned some brand new skills in the background thanks to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Listen, fellas, it's close to Valentine's Day right now, so to all you young guys out there who are looking for love, let me tell you something. Dames love skills. The more skills you possess, the more women you will get. In the wise words of Warren Buffett, the more you learn, the more your pee can burn. If you join up with Skillshare, you can master the true language of love. Deutsch. Learn to say, Ich liebe dich, Fräulein, and make her weak in the knees. Maybe the spoken word alone isn't enough. Luckily, Skillshare offers several courses on becoming a better singer. With a skill like this, you can serenade her alongside that barbershop quartet you hired. Or if you're completely hopeless, they offer a course on dating, so you can trick any old gal into falling in love with you. As for me, I already got myself a girlfriend, so I've been taking Aaron Raymond's course on how to get your camera out of auto mode so that I can make my videos look even better. And so far, it's looking pretty good. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can stop being lonely and start being creative. And again, big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So there you have it. That's Medal of Honor above and beyond. For a game that's gonna holocaust you 60 bucks, you'll encounter terrible gameplay, awful AI, poor design choices across the board, and boring cutscenes. 
Really, the final solution is to just ignore the game altogether. One thing that I forgot to mention in this review was that the music in this game was absolutely wonderful. Like I said at the start of this video, Medal of Honor gets almost everything wrong. It goes above and beyond the Call of Duty in creating the worst battlefield World War II has ever had. It doesn't utilize VR very well at all. Matter of fact, it has no clue what to even do with virtual reality. The entire game is just a gimmick. It feels like something that should have come out in VR four years ago, which is coincidentally when this game started development. They haven't taken any notes from existing VR games like Boneworks or Alex. You know, games that have pushed the boundaries of VR forward. It's frustrating too, because this game is bursting with potential. It has some fun ideas, but it always misses the mark. With a bit of competence, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond could have been an instant must-have for the VR community. But as it stands now, it's just a massive waste of time and money. Well, that does it for this video, everybody. And of course, I gotta thank my patrons. Every dollar I get from the Patreon goes right back into this channel. I get better equipment, I can pay people on Fiverr, get costumes, that kind of thing. I have big ideas for stuff in the future, so if you wanna see the quality of this channel continue to improve, maybe consider joining these fine fellas. If not, watching, sharing the videos is support enough. So thank you all so much for sticking around, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.